Hi, I'm Corn Wagon Thunder, and I'm very excited to be here today uh, to talk about my work. Um, I began working with self-portraiture as a response to a period of a sort of traumatic or dramatic transition in my life, uh, a de facto midlife crisis. So turning the camera on myself was a way for me to examine my personal upheaval and essentially my personal mythology. So over time, I moved from the sort of strictly autobiographical um, manner to considering how we construct and transform meaning for ourselves in relation to existence. So in our modern society, um, we all have cameras sort of readily at our fingertips. And I think it seems that um, a picture, our sort of posed image, our face, our clothing, can capture and express something essential about our personality. But that premise is uh, something that was invented. Um, the uh, premise that an image can be an authentic representation, that we are unique individuals at all, uh, was a historical development. So we're looking towards the end of the 15th century in uh, painting specifically. I'm thinking about Albrecht Durer, and the self-portrait becomes an act of uh, self-fashioning. So there's a Renaissance conception um, that takes place then uh, that's become so commonplace now that we hardly notice it. So this idea that uh, there's the self as a subjective individual or that we can tell our own story. So for me, um, I'm really interested in this mythology of the self and how meaning gets constructed or how we construct our own meaning. So also think a lot about those existential questions of who am I and why am I and that paradoxical nature of the human condition. So for me, photography is a tool to kind of examine those edges of self-discovery and the mis mysteries that we find there. When it comes to working, I think my self-portraiture is fairly, um, it's a performative act. So while you only see a still image hanging on the wall, uh, there's a lot of unseen actions that go into creating <clears throat> these photographs. So essentially I am uh, the set designer, the actor, the camera person, the director, all wrapped up into one. <clears throat> and. I usually start with an idea. Um, so for this work, I'm thinking a lot about uh, symbolism. So I might pick an object, um, say the telephone or an onion or an eggplant, and think about a color scheme. <clears throat> and then I'm building on that. So through the process of uh, doing research, thinking about uh, the symbolic nature of items, and then acquiring those props, um, setting up the scene, setting up the camera, getting dressed, and then uh, ultimately running back and forth between uh, the scene and the camera to press that shutter button. <clears throat> Somewhere in all this uh, process, an idea evolves and I end up with an image that uh, holds some truth for me. So. With the series that's on display here, To Be and Become Lost in the Becoming, I'm investigating my journey in, to becoming a middle-aged woman, and also thinking about the loss of my mother. <clears throat> so this work was a way for me to have a conversation with her, um, to envision what her life was like as a middle-aged woman, um, and to sort of envision what her guidance for me might be. So this series behind me, The Seven Tables, <clears throat> references the uh, Russian dolls, the Matryoshkas. So I'm thinking about uh, the women that we carry within us, um, our ancestors, women of our past, who we are currently and who we can be, sort of all of our possible identities. <clears throat> so in this series, the sort of repeating element of the tablecloth and the, uh, the house coat or bathrobe is their important symbols throughout the series that speak to a certain idea of domesticity. <clears throat> and 
And I think uh, that idea being that uh, we are preparing our domestic space for company, for someone else to view. So the, the tablecloth uh, sort of covers, protects, and it also hides. Um, everything needs to appear that it's in order. And the house coat, uh, to me, sort of embodies this idea of propriety within the home and this uh, notion of sort of a buttoned up sexuality um, that we're not allowed to express who we are uh, internally, really. So the image called Rebirth of Agency um, is about uh, the myth of the so-called battle axe, which is a pejorative term applied to um, forceful, domineering older women, which is often um, portrayed as an angry woman wielding the frying pan at her errant husband in these, this sort of cartoon depiction. So I, I've been thinking a lot about perimenopause and menopause and the emotional impacts that that physical process has on a woman. And especially in our culture that's so youth obsessed and a society that doesn't really have much tolerance for the expression of female anger. So in this photograph, uh, the woman who is grieving the loss of her fecundity embraces a common domestic symbol, the frying pan, to kind of reclaim her freedom and agency with a, a touch of dark humor. <clears throat> so the while I'm dealing with sort of uh, serious topics and a bit of sadness in, in the notion of loss, um, I also think it's important to to come at that with uh, a smile, a bit of humor, um, which helps us, I think, process uh, things. Then I wanted to talk about the image infidelity. I walk with impunity. So this photograph, I'm looking at thistle, um, and there's a lot of use of flowers in this sort of Victorian idea of choreography. So the thistle is a symbol of fidelity. So I'm thinking about, uh, in this photograph, the notion of being bound in a relationship and the marriage contract, um, which is a sort of moral code of monogamy that's placed on us um, by society. So I'm thinking about the piousness of those who are able to maintain their loyalty, how that relates to religious mores, <clears throat> and also questioning uh, the wrongness or rightness of that and how uh, those ideas affect women differently than men. <clears throat> so I think in a relationship, uh, sort of in general, you have this blind faith and um, you, you accept it. It's kind of like, uh, for me, uh, the way that I grew up with religion, um, questioning that was not necessarily condoned. Um, so once you're locked into a marriage, I think uh, it's understood that you don't stray. And if you do, then you certainly don't talk about it. Um, and so I'm also thinking about the idea or, or the trope of the damsel in distress who's tied um, on the railroad tracks and playing with the tension around that. <clears throat> so um, in all of this work, uh, I think... I'm kind of relying on the idea of tropes and stereotypes to some degree, and then kind of filtering that through my own uh, upbringing um, in this sort of very Southern religious way and, and playing with a lot of those ideas. <clears throat>